Hello everybody, Spectrus here. Today we'll be continuing What If Baba Raised Goku. The link to the first part will be in the description down below. But, that being said, let's get started. I will give you a brief rundown of what happened last time. So, with Baba and her monster's influence, Goku had become more serious and willing to do more dirty tricks than in canon. He collected the Dragon Balls with Bulma, and Yamcha wished for the spirit of a wolf, unlocking a new transformation of sorts. Goku went on to fight Mercenary Tao and saved Bora, resulting in Upa training with his father and later Roshi. Chi Chi was also interested in Goku becoming a fighter and eventually training under Roshi as well. Tambourine in this timeline didn't attack after the 22nd Budokai due to Goku not having the Power Pole or Dragon Ball. And so King Piccolo wished for his youth from the sidelines as everyone split up. With Goku and the gang going to Korin's tower, while Roshi, Chi Chi, and Upa went back to Kame House, and Ted Shinhan and Chao Tzu began searching for a place to train. Goku sensed evil energy somewhere by Ten Shinhan, Chao Tzu, and Roshi. He went after Roshi, while Yamcha and Krillin went after Ten Shinhan, and that's where we will begin this video. So, if you haven't already, make sure to join Lightshow's Discord and follow him on Twitter. The link is in the description down below. <laughs> Moving into the King Piccolo saga, King Piccolo arrives on Kame House and Drum and Tambourine arrive near Tenshin on Chaozi. Two children of the Demon King attack the two Crane students and surprise them. The Chinhan got back up after the attack and faced Drum while Chaozu faced Tambourine. They were both outclassed in terms of power, so Ten Shinhan devised a plan to make it a bit easier. He used the Soul of Flare on Drum and then proceeded to kick him in the face, launching himself at Tambourine. He knocked Tambourine into the ground, and he and Chaozu both used the Dodon right to kill him. Now only Drum was left. He quickly disposed of Chaozu, causing Ten Shinhan to prepare to use a tri -beam to sacrifice his own life and finish Drum. However, he didn't need to do so, as Drum was hit with two blue blasts. There wasn't anything left of him. Afterward, Ten Shinhan powered down. He was angry at the death of Chao Tzu, and was also confused as who had attacked them. Yamcha and Krillin told him that they didn't know, but that Goku sensed evil energy near him and also Roshi and that they're all going to go meet up at Korn's tower until everything is dealt with. Ten Shinhan then follows them while King Piccolo now prepares to fight Roshi. The old master reveals that he knows of him, and his master had sacrificed himself to defeat him. Piccolo decided to reward his knowledge with a swift death to one of his students. He swiped his arm and a chunk of Kame House where Chi Chi stood exploded, killing her. Roshi was extremely angered at this and told Upa to run into Kame House and grab a jar. He then held off Piccolo long enough for him to do so. And once he returned with the jar, he used the Mafuba immediately. However, just like in canon, he misses, which results in his death. Piccolo then feels the death of his children and is kicked in the face. Goku stood behind him with an angry expression. He had sensed the deaths of both his master and one of his friends. He wouldn't stand for it. Goku attacked but he was swiftly beaten down. Piccolo then attempts to finish him off by shooting a large beam at Kame House and then flying off to prepare her his new plan. Fortunately, Upa had tackled Goku into the ocean, saving both of them. Goku told Upa to take him to Korin's tower, and so Upa tried his best to lift and swim Goku to shore. Yamcha and Krillin both return to Korin's tower with the Chinhan, and they get to the top, finding the whole monster squad there training with Korin. They all stop as they see the three of them. After explaining the absence of Chao Tzu, they decide the best decision is to train and wait for Goku. While they're waiting, King Piccolo had decided what he was going to do. He would make a new child, not as strong as Drum, but stronger than Tambourine. He then announced that he was going to be the new king of Earth, and his reign began with the announcement that the city which Bulma resides in would be destroyed first. Bulma contacted Yantra through his phone that he bought to call Bulma like we mentioned in part 1, and so Yantra began strategizing. He wanted to go and attempt to fight, 
but he thought that they should only bring the number of people that they might need no more. Spike and Tachinon both had powerful abilities that could come in handy, and so the two of them went with Yamcha while the others waited for Goku. Eventually, Upo arrives at the bottom of the tower meeting his father once more. He tells him of their current situation, and so Bora launches the two of them up the tower. They then begin climbing and eventually make it up to the top. Everyone is surprised to see Goku, and Korn gives him a sensu bean. He then answers where Spike, Yamcha, and Tenshinhan are, saying that they're going to face Piccolo. Goku wants to go help, but Korn tells him otherwise. Korn reveals the Ultra Divine Water and gives it to Goku. He drinks it, boosting him above his cannon counterpart. He then prepares to leave on foot. By the time he departs, the three warriors are facing off against Piccolo and his new son, Timpani. Yamcha leads the charge, quickly rushing in and attacking Piccolo with his wolf fang fist. Piccolo dodges the majority of the blows, but one lands and cuts his cheek a bit. Meanwhile, Tachanon and Timpani are fighting, and Tachanon has a slight advantage. He uses the Four Witches technique to attack more and begins winning by a decent margin. Spike and Yamcha together prove to be a good team up on King Piccolo. Spike and Yamcha together prove to be a good team up against the Demon King, both complementing each other's skills. Spike says that for a human, he isn't so bad, and Yamcha chuckles while he continues fighting. Tenshinhan eventually fires four separate Dodon rays with all of his hands, and kills Timpani. While Spike prepares his ultimate attack, he puts two fingers together and powers up the Devil Might Beam. Goku on his way senses this and hopes that his friends will land this attack. He fires it and King Piccolo was nowhere to be seen. Tenshinhan yells that he did it. Spike turns to him sweating. He tells him that he didn't hear any explosion and the two other fighters are completely unsettled. Spike felt heat on his back and a loud yell was heard from behind as Spike was launched forward into the ground by Piccolo. Yamcha and Tenshinhan attacked together but now that Piccolo was serious with the intent to kill, they weren't winning at all. Luckily, Goku had finally arrived. Goku was stronger than the Demon King, and he vowed to get revenge for everyone. Goku then began fighting him, and it wasn't one-sided at all. It was pretty close. But Goku had a clear advantage. Eventually, he ends up using the Devil Might Beam that he had finally perfected over the three years. He fires at Piccolo, and he spits out an egg with all of his power into it before being hit with the beam and exploding. Everyone celebrated Goku's victory, but Goku realized that he wouldn't be able to bring anyone back now that Shenron was dead. He went to Korin to ask if there was another way to do anything. Korin replied that they might be able to speak to Kami. However, they will need the power pole to reach the lookout. No one knows where the power pole is, and so Goku decides to ask the one closest to Roshi that he knows. Goku uses the Nimbus to seek out what used to be Fire Mountain and informs the Ox King of the news that both his master and daughter were killed. The Ox King is furious at this, but, but Goku tells him that there might be a chance that they can come back. He asks him about the Power Pole, and the Ox King tells him that Roshi had given it to a man named Gohan. He left and went to live out in the forest. Goku thanks him, hopping back on the Nimbus and soaring to find him. He eventually finds a shack where an old man rests in a chair and asks if he is Gohan. And he is correct. He then tells him that he's looking for the power pole to resurrect his master. Gohan quickly hands over and tells him to tell him how it goes afterwards. Goku takes it and flies off once again. He arrives on Korin's tower yet again and asks if he had the correct item. Korin accepted it and so Goku linked it up and moved upward. Eventually he did make it up there, lost a fight to Popo and then was greeted by Kami. He told him of Piccolo Jr. and that the world would be threatened by him yet again. He would only be granted the wish to bring them back if Goku trained to defeat him. Goku agreed, but two more had risen to the lookout. Yamcha had climbed up the power pole a while after Goku did, and Tenshinhan flew. The two wanted to make sure everything was going smoothly, and so after they heard the deal from Goku, they also wanted to join in on training. Kami allowed this as long as they didn't get in the way of Goku's progress. The two chuckled at this and prepared for their long years of training. Meanwhile, everyone was brought back and Chi Chi reunited with her father while Krillin did the same with Roshi and Shao Tzu and Tenshinhan talked telepathically. 
The Turtles Goal would continue training for the next tournament knowing that Goku and the others would return then. Along with this, the Monster Squad also continued their training for the Budokai, whilst adding a new member to their crew. The three years passed and everyone was massively stronger than in canon. The reunion was great, however, it would seem that someone new was there as well, Piccolo Jr. Goku was ready to approach him, but Fangs stopped him. He told him that he found his egg while he was flying after Goku to make sure he beat King Piccolo. Goku stays suspicious though, and so do the rest of the cast. Moving on, the bracket once the preliminaries ends off is as follows. Ten Shinhan vs. Cyborg Tao, Goku vs. Chi Chi, Krillin vs. Piccolo, and Yamcha vs. Spike. And Shinhan easily bodies Tao and avenges Chao Chu's loss. Goku beats Chi Chi and agrees to marry her. Piccolo beats Krillin easily. And Yamcha beats Spike. Nothing really to note here, just easy wins. Ten Shinhan vs. Goku goes basically just like in canon, only the two are stronger. But Goku still wins. Piccolo and Yamcha's fight, however, is a bit more interesting. Yamcha keeps up decently well. Although, note here that Piccolo doesn't wear weights in this timeline. Yamcha's new spirit ball is able to catch Piccolo off guard and allows him to use a wolf fang fist to attack him. However, Piccolo manages to stay in the ring even after that much of an attack. He then finishes Yamcha off with an explosive demon wave. The final match began and Goku and Piccolo were about to face off. At this point, Goku is stronger than he was in the Raditz Saga, and Piccolo is equal to what he was. This fight would really be close, but Goku would sense that his heart didn't have the same evil his predecessor had. Goku ends up winning this fight, and Piccolo returns home with the Monster Squad, to the surprise of everyone else, including Kami. Yamcha and Krillin return back to Kame House along with Roshi and Upa to continue the training Upa. And, well, training themselves. Ten Shinon and Shoutsu head out and train around the world as they do, and Goku and Chi Chi go off to have Gohan. Chi Chi allows for Gohan to be trained a bit, but her son needs to be intelligent more than powerful. Goku respects this, and they visit Goku's old home at Baba's Palace from time to time. Gohan looks up to Baba just as much as he does his parents. Anyway, the five years pass and everyone reunites, but this time at Baba's palace. Tenshin and Chachu still weren't there, but basically everyone else was. Bulma was also angry that Yamcha didn't call her in the years, and was furious as well. She was about to leave before Raditz arrived. Raditz examined all the power levels there and sensed that they were incredibly strong for their planet. He told Goku his backstory like in canon, took his son, and now were in the positions like they were in canon. Goku, Yamcha, and Piccolo all decide to team up and go after him together though. The four were much stronger than they were in canon, so together they would do a lot more than Goku and Piccolo could have alone. Their teamwork d had developed over the years as well. Yamcha used his wolf fang fist, making him the strongest one there when he used it. And Goku used the Kamehameha wave, while Spike just used regular attacks and beams. The three were able to hold off Raditz nicely until Piccolo was ready to use the special beam cannon he had created over the five year gap. However, this didn't go as planned due to Raditz shoving Spike in the way and holding him there. Goku saw this and quickly jumped behind Raditz trying to force his arms away, but it didn't work in time and all three of them were killed by Piccolo's attack. Yamcha said that they could just use the Dragon Balls, and so Vegeta and Nappa took note of this, then stated that they will be there within a year. Kami prepares the Z Fighters and the Monster Squad to train at the lookout, while he convinces King Yenma to let Goku and Spike run Snake Way. Yenma accepts Goku, but is skeptical about Spike, since he's a devil. Kami tries to convince him of the good deeds he has done, but Yenma doesn't want to take any chances. However, he does allow Spike to return to the other world. So while Goku runs Snake Way, Spike is in hell training with a familiar face, a Saiyan who also was put in hell very recently. And that's where we'll leave this second part. So how do you guys like the way we took this going into Z? Do you like the way Piccolo Jr. was implemented? 
Are you excited for a third part? Let us know in the comments and we'll plan on putting up another part every 31st of the month. So, in next March. That being said, my name's Spectrus, aka Lord Glacier, and um, I'm gonna get out of here. Bye-bye!